This is concept T classes and today we will see chapter 8 of class 9 science motion. Now this chapter is also divided into two parts. So let's see part 1. So in part 1, first we will see what is motion, how we can describe a motion. We will see motion along a straight line. Then how can we measure the rate of motion? We will see what is speed, acceleration, velocity, uniform motion, non-uniform motion. And the rest of the topics will be discussed in part 2. So let's take a quick introduction. What is motion? Motion is the phenomenon in which an object changes its position over time. When do we say that this car is in motion? When it moves from one point to another over a period of time. So a body is said to be in motion if it changes its position with respect to time. And when do we say that the body is at a state of rest? It, a body is said to be at a state of rest if it doesn't change its position with respect to time and surroundings. See when a car is parked at the side of the road, we can say that, that the car is at a state of rest because it is not changing its position. Okay. Now most motions are complex. Why do we say that? Let us take some examples. You might have noticed right while sitting inside a moving bus, the roadside trees, they all appear to be moving backwards or a person standing on the roadside, they can see the bus along with the passengers are moving. However, the passenger which is inside the bus, they see the fellow passengers at rest. So from all this, what can we understand? That motion are complex. Okay. So motions can be of different types depending about the type of path the object takes. Some object may move in a straight line. We call that as rectilinear motion. Some may take a circular path, circular motion or circulatory motion. Some may rotate, some may vibrate and there are situations where it, they involve a combination of this. So in this chapter, we shall first learn how to describe the motion of objects along a straight line. Then in part 2, we learn how to express such motions through simple equations and graphs. So let's start. First, let's see how we can describe a motion. So let's see how we describe a motion. In order to describe a motion, first we have to describe the location of an object. How do we describe the location of an object? For that, we need a reference point. Say for example, this car is moving towards north. Okay. So how can we say in which position the car is? So for that, we take this house as this reference point. We can say or let us assume that this car is 2 km north of this house. Okay. So we have specified the position of this car with respect to this house. So this house is the reference point. So to describe the position of an object, we need to specify the reference point. Sometimes we call it as origin. That is a reference point. It is used to describe the location of an object. And an object can be referred to so many reference points. Okay? Sometimes it can be the house, sometimes it can be the tree, anything. Understood? So to describe the location of an object, we need to specify the reference point. Now let's see the motion along a straight line. We understood what is a reference point. So let's learn how to describe a motion of an object along a straight line. The simplest type of motion is the motion along the straight line. So first let's see how to describe this. Let's take an example. Consider the motion of an object along the straight path. It starts from O. So let this be the reference point. Okay, or We can call it as origin as when. Let A, B, C uh, represent the position of the object at different instants. Okay? So let's say that the object it moves from the point O to the point A. So the total path covered is 60 km. Now this is the distance. Now if the object starts from O, reaches A, come back to C through B, what is the total path covered? O, A plus OC that is 60 plus 35 which is equal to 95 kilometer. Now this total path that the object covered is called as distance. What is distance? The total path from its initial position to its final position covered by an object is said to be the distance traveled by it. 
the total path covered by an object from its initial position to the final position is called as distance and distance is a scalar quantity what do you mean by scalar quantity it is a physical quantity which has only magnitude it has no direction we are not saying in which direction like it goes north to south to west east no it has only magnitude it has only a numerical value so that is why such physical quantities are called as scalar quantity okay then what is displacement it is the shortest path or distance measured from the initial position to the final position okay what is distance distance is the total path covered by an object from its starting point to end point whereas the shortest distance from the initial to the final position is termed as displacement now this displacement it is a vector quantity what do you mean by vector quantity it is a quantity which requires both the numerical value which we call as magnitude and direction it shows it goes north it goes east west so here the direction of motion is also mentioned along with the value or the magnitude hence we call this displacement as a vector quantity thus the two different physical quantities the distance and displacement are used to describe the overall motion of an object okay so the what is distance it is a total path covered by an object from its initial to its final position and displacement is the shortest distance measured from the initial to the final position distance is a scalar quantity that is it, it has only a numerical value it is always positive it cannot be negative or zero whereas displacement it shows direction it is a vector quantity and if the initial position and the final position is zero then we can say it is zero displacement so the values can be positive negative or zero so these two are the physical quantities which is used to describe the overall motion of an object so we understood what is motion how to describe a motion based on a reference point about distance displacement now let's see what is uniform motion and non uniform motion when an object covers equal distance in equal intervals of time it is said to be in uniform motion see an object it covers equal distance in equal intervals of time such a case the object is said to be in uniform motion and the time interval in this motion is very small whereas in non uniform motion the object covers unequal distance in equal intervals of time when an object covers unequal distance in equal intervals of time we say that that object is undergoing non uniform motion next is measuring the rate of motion let's see how we can do that now different objects may take different amounts of time to cover a given distance for example here if you see this figures here we can see the bowling speed is about 143 km per hour whereas this car the sign board is given the speed should be only 50 km per hour see so the different objects may take different amounts of time to cover a given distance some might be fast some might be slow and the rate at which the objects move can also be different okay different objects would move at different rate some objects can move at the same rate as well so the distance traveled by an object in unit time is referred to as speed what is speed the distance traveled by an object in unit time is referred to as speed its unit is meter per second so one of the ways of measuring the rate of motion of an object is to find the speed of that object okay so speed is one of the way to measure the rate of motion now to specify the speed of an object we require only its magnitude only its numerical value we don't need the direction okay so speed is also a scalar quantity and the speed of an object need not be constant okay it can be different as well now if the body is executing uniform motion that is if it covers equal distance in equal intervals of time then there will be a constant speed whereas if the body is traveling with non uniform motion that is if it covers unequal distance in equal intervals of time then the speed will be also different okay so we have to calculate the average speed because the speed would have different values throughout the motion okay so let's see how we can calculate the average speed 
Thus, the average speed on an object is obtained by dividing the total distance traveled by an object by the total time taken. That is, average speed is equal to total distance traveled by total time taken. That is, if an object travels at a distance s in time t, then the speed v is equal to s by t. Let us understand this by an example. A car travels 32 km during the first two hours. Then it travels 13 km in the next hour. What is the average speed of the car? So, average speed's formula is total distance by the total time taken. Now, what is the total distance? At first two hours, he covers 32 km. Next one hour, it covers 13 km. So, 32 plus 13, which is equal to 45 km. Total time taken, 2 hours plus 1 hour, which is equal to 3 hour. So, average speed is 45 divided by 3, which is equal to 15 km per hour. We can also convert this into meter per second. Okay. So, this is how we can calculate the average speed. So, in the last side, we discussed how to find the rate of motion without direction, speed without direction. Now, let us see what happens if you want to find the rate of motion with direction. So, the rate of motion of an object is complete if we specify the direction of motion along with its speed. The speed with direction is called as velocity. Okay, Velocity is the speed of an object moving in a direction or we can also say the displacement divided by time gives velocity. Its SI unit is also meter per second. Okay, So, here we can see this is the speed. Car is moving at a speed of 60 km. But when we are saying that the car is moving at 60 km in each direction, we can say this is the velocity. Okay, Now, the velocity of an object can be uniform or variable. Now, when an object moving along a straight line at non-uniform motion, that is, it covers unequal distance at equal intervals of time, we can express the rate of motion in terms of average velocity. How can we calculate the average velocity at that time? It is same as how we calculated the average speed. Average velocity is equal to total displacement by total time taken. That is, the average velocity of an object moving in non-uniform motion is equal to total displacement by total time taken. Now, let us see the case of a uniform motion. So, if the object is changing at uniform rate, then the average velocity is given by the arithmetic mean of the initial velocity and the final velocity of the given period of time. That is, if the object is moving in uniform motion, that is, it covers equal distance in equal intervals of time, then the average velocity is given by the arithmetic mean of initial and final velocity. That is, average velocity is equal to initial velocity plus final velocity divided by 2. Mathematically, we can say VAV is equal to U plus V by 2, where VAV is average velocity, U is the initial velocity and V is the final velocity of the object. Okay? In the case of uh, non-uniform motion, average velocity is total displacement by total time taken. Whereas, in case of uniform motion, average velocity is equal to initial velocity plus final velocity divided by 2. Now, let us see a sum. A car is moving with the initial velocity of 40 meter per second and it touches its destiny at 7 meter per second. Calculate its average velocity. So, what is initial velocity? 40 meter per second. Final velocity? 70 meter per second. What is the average velocity? U plus V by 2. 40 plus 70 by 2 which is equal to 55 meter per second. So, this is how we can measure the rate of motion with direction and without direction. Now, let us see the rate of change of velocity. So, till now we saw what is distance, what is displacement. When the distance is divided by time, we get speed. When the displacement is divided by time, we get velocity. Now, what happens when the velocity changes or the rate of change of velocity? Let us see. So, we already saw what is velocity. Velocity is the speed of an object moving in a definite direction. The velocity of an object can be uniform, sometimes it can be non-uniform. It can be changed by changing the object speed, the direction of motion or sometimes both. Now, in the case of uniform motion of an object along a straight line, the velocity remains a constant with time. Okay, So, during uniform motion, the change in velocity of an object for any time interval is zero. Whereas, in the case of non-uniform motion, the velocity varies, it changes with time. It has different values at different instants and at different points of path 
and the velocity is not zero at any interval understood in simple words we can say that during uniform motion the velocity remains constant with time whereas in non uniform motion the velocity varies with time so this change in velocity with respect to time is called as acceleration so acceleration is a physical quantity that measures the change in velocity of an object per unit time acceleration is equal to change in velocity by time taken now if the velocity of an object changes from initial value u to the final value v in time t then the acceleration a is equal to v minus u by t so this is a change in velocity by the time taken si unit of acceleration is meter per second square so let's see what is uniform acceleration if an object travels in a straight line and its velocity increases or decreases by equal amounts in equal intervals of time then the object is said to have uniform acceleration for example the motion of a free falling body so such type of motion is called as accelerated motion here what happens the velocity either it decreases or increases by equal amounts in equal intervals of time so the acceleration is taken as positive if it is in the direction of velocity and negative when it is opposite to the direction of velocity let's see what is non uniform acceleration if an object can travel with non uniform acceleration if its velocity changes at non uniform rate for example a car traveling along a straight road increases its speed by unequal amounts in equal intervals of time then that car is said to be in non uniform accelerated motion that is if an object either increases its speed by unequal amounts in equal intervals of time then that object said to be having non uniform acceleration there is another term called as retardation or deacceleration okay this is seen in non uniform motion and in that what happens is that there is a decrease in velocity with time okay and this is how we calculate deacceleration change in velocity by time v minus u by t and here the acceleration would be negative so that's all for part 1 in part 2 we shall learn how to express these motions through simple equations and graphs and we'll also learn about uniform circular motion so stay tuned for the next session thank you so much may god bless you all take care and bye bye